the truth that no matter what we face, we can always come into the house of the Lord and lift up our hands and worship and praise. And what a release it is just to let go of the cares of the week. How many of y'all had a rough week? You can be honest here at the front of the service, but how many of y'all will say, I'm going to leave here better than I came in Jesus' name, right? Hallelujah. Psalm 27 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Hallelujah. The war may rise against me, and this I will be confident in one thing. Say one thing. One thing I've desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he will hide me and set me upon a rock. How many people under the sound of my voice today are glad that he hides us and he keeps us and he sustains us through the toils and the cares of life and no matter what it is that we're going through, we can leave here with victory. We can leave here with a shout of praise. We can leave here with a song in our heart. I mean, you're already here. You might as well get the goods. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for what you're going to do in this house today, God. And by faith, we declare that your kingdom will come and your will be done, oh God, under this roof at 1444 Edgefield Road, oh Lord. We thank you, God, for how you moved for us last week, but God, we need a fresh touch from heaven today. Anybody else, come on, lift up your hands, God. We need you to move in a mighty way, oh Lord. We need you to move mountains out of our way, oh God. There's people under the sound of my voice that need a miracle, oh Lord. And today is a good day, oh Lord. Father God, I pray, oh Lord, that this worship would please you. I pray for an anointing, oh God, in this house that will destroy every yoke. And in the name of Jesus, we declare victory. Come on, declare victory with me today. Hallelujah. He's my
person by or one song by or one word by just for you he'll do it because he loves you just that much feel his presence in the house today and I'm grateful we're going to go to the Lord in prayer today and we're going to pray for some needs today we need to pray for Billy Brazel who is in the hospital we need to pray for him today also, Evan Loper is sick. We need to pray for him today. We need to pray for Mark and Jennifer Fentress. They have been and are sick today. Also, the Penningtons are sick today and need our prayers. David Hanks had shoulder replacement surgery. 
needs our prayers today. Shanidra Tyler has been sick. Jimmy Goldman is here, but Brother Jimmy's facing um, kidney a kidney removal. Uh, we need to pray for Brother Jimmy now and in the days to come as well. We don't want to forget to pray for Brother Shane Smith. The Lord would keep him safe and protect him. Maybe you have a need today of your own. Could you just slip your hand up? You have a need, you have an issue. I'm sorry if I'm a little slow today. I just got a lot running through my mind. I'm trying not to forget things today. Aren't you glad God doesn't forget? God always remembers. Let's pray together. Father God, in your mighty name today, we're grateful. We are grateful and thankful that we serve a mighty God. Lord, we talked about that Wednesday night. It's resonated in my mind that too often we as your people see our circumstances and our situations as huge and insurmountable. But we forget if we belong to you, the mighty God that we serve. And that is a, in the words of the children's song. He's got the whole world in his hand and I know when you're in the middle of a crisis when you're in the middle of dealing with things that thing seems so huge and so big it's all you see it's all you hear it's all you live but I just want to remind some people today they are not alone that his spirit lives within us and that Lord he has the power to give us peace and hope and an expected end a future and I trust today God that as people reach out and do exactly what the little widow woman did when Jesus passed by she reached out to touch the hem of his garment pray that people as you pass by today will reach out and, and grab a hold of you knowing that you possess the power to do everything that is needed today we pray for those that are sick today we pray, Lord, for the Penningtons and the Lopers, the Fentresses, the Tylers. We pray, Lord, for those that are in the hospital. Brother Billy Brazel. We pray for those, Lord, that have had procedures and are home for David Hanks. That you touch that shoulder. And as he's going through rehab, that you would touch him. Touch Chris today. Chris Wilkes today at his shoulder. Lord, the rehab he's going through touch him today as well for those that are facing things in the future for Jimmy Goldman Lord I thank you for Jimmy's outlook for his attitude but I pray God that you would just do your work do your work among him among doctors among Lord you, you've already been struck for healing there's nothing that Lord you're not able to do you could heal him on your own when they go in there Lord or do another test just to finalize Lord they could see that what they saw before is not even there. You can do it today. Lord, there are so many others that are running through my mind today. Lord, those that live close to us and even those that maybe people here don't know, but their needs running through my mind. I, I just pray for all of them. Much like those that raise their hands, I don't know their need, but their need is extremely important. And we pray for them today. Whatever that need is, minister to them as only you can do. Holy Ghost, have your way in their life. If they need encouragement, do it, Lord. If they need help, do it, Lord. If they need healing, do it, Lord. Even if somebody is praying about salvation, save them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there's deliverance needed, deliver them, Lord. Set them free. Lord, you specialize in difficult things, and nothing's impossible. And we claim it today and ask you to do your work and for all that you do father god we will be thankful and grateful we will magnify your name and exalt you thank you for your presence today thank you for the worship today but don't let us stop now just because the music stops doesn't mean that worship stops because worship is an attitude worship is a decision god i pray that we will make a decision and have the attitude of worship in everything to do and today in all that we do.
and we'll be careful to bless and praise and honor you today in the name that is above every name the name of Jesus everybody said amen 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 we are so blessed and honored for the Lord's presence today I know he says we're two or three are gathered in his name he is there but uh, we like it when we see the evidence and I see him on your face and I felt him in our worship and that is so wonderful if you're our guest today please know how grateful how thankful we are that you have chosen to be with us today or maybe you've been a time before a time or two before uh, and you've come back again we don't take that lightly either we are seriously so thankful that you've chosen to be at Sweetwater today and we want to say thank you and hopefully you feel a warm welcome being here hopefully you've been greeted well uh, you've been given directions to wherever you need to find and if uh, we haven't give us another shot we'll do better but I am confident in those our greeters and those that help us they do such a wonderful job our ushers as well we're grateful for all of them and uh, we just want to say welcome to you today hopefully you'll get a, a uh, bulletin as you came in the door or as you go out we have been extremely busy over the last month and will be even into the next month and we don't want you to miss anything that is going on. Um, the, the 16th, 17th, and 18th of September, we're having revival services right here. It's Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning with evangelist Chris Gerard, his wife Amanda. Um, and they sent me a picture with their two children. They went many years without children. And uh, the Lord has blessed them. But for some reason, the picture with the children was fuzzy. And um, I know they wanted them babies on that picture, but they'll have the babies with them, and uh, we'll look forward to greeting them. Pastor Chris, Brother Chris is a great evangelist. He is a missionary, and uh, I consider him to be my friend, and I, I, I only want people that I consider my friends to be in this pulpit because I don't trust just anybody because you are special to me and I don't want just anybody trying to talk to you if you need talking to I'll do it you know what I'm saying but I trust them and their word and their ministry and we're looking forward to that now because we've been so busy with doing things we've had multiple posters and and we've been trying not to give you too much at one time because you get lost in it and one of the things we've neglected to do I know it's been in the bulletin but I haven't posted a lot about it, and that is 21 days of fasting. I know my wife has put some things on social media for us. Actually, today is like day number three. So if you haven't been involved, you can get in there. Um, again, we don't tell you how to do it. Uh, we don't tell you what to do uh, because we understand sometimes there's issues that people have to deal with in their life, and so... We're leaving that between you and God, but we're asking everybody, while you're fasting and praying, pray for this revival. Pray for these meetings. Pray for our evangelists. Pray that God will do whatever he wants to do. I believe the timing is strategic. From all that we've been through and all that is accomplished, and even where we are as not only a church, but as a community, even as a nation, and where God's leading us in the future, I believe it's a strategic time. We don't have these often, but what I'm asking you to do is if you can carve out Friday and Saturday and be here. Hopefully you're already going to be here on Sunday because this is important for the life of yourself, and for the life of our church. And so we want you to be involved in that. You can be involved in the prayer and fasting also, I know I'm jumping around. Tonight, we're having our third night of worship. And uh, 6 o'clock, there's no preaching, there's no teaching. We just come together to worship. I believe that there are some important things that need to happen in preparation for revival. I believe there has to be the preaching of the Word that gets us ready for that. I also believe that there needs to be prayer and fasting for that. And I also believe that worship is a huge part of that so that your spirit is right so when the word is scattered, it falls on good ground. 
So I'm asking you, if you don't normally come to prayer meeting on Sunday night, would you invite people? Would you just come and we're going to worship the Lord? We're going to sing. I don't know what all we're going to do, but whatever we do, it's to honor and bless and magnify the name of Jesus. How many like to worship? I think we all ought to be worshipers. So we're looking forward to that tonight at 6. Uh, prayer and fasting through. It ends on Thursday, I believe. Revival will start on Friday the 16th uh, through the 18th. Those are important things. I know there are other things that are, are listed in the bulletin that you will need to understand and know about as well. Uh, we've got a big day planned toward the end of October, and uh, we'll be starting to talk about that a little more. We just didn't want to do it too early and be too far out, but that's going to be an exciting time. People say, well, why don't we want to have that now? The church is paid for. Can I tell you, your church is about almost 20 years old. We just replaced the sixth heating and air conditioning unit since I've been here. Uh, when you build a building and everything's new, you have no worries for a while, but then it gets old and things need to be done. We need to replace some carpet in our walk areas. We want to redo some things that haven't been done in all that time. Uh, there's a lot of things to do. And so just because the church is paid for doesn't mean we can just be at ease. We still got to work because Jesus is coming. But until he does, he wants us to occupy and be busy about the kingdom work. And we're going to do that to the best of our ability. So please make sure you keep on giving our our basket is back in the back. Your tithe, your offerings. Today is debt reduction Sunday. But we're not debt reducting. Is that a word? We're not debt reducing anymore. Matter of fact, we've already made plans. Our lease on our copier uh, runs out in January or February. And if we don't do something quick, we have to pay property tax on a machine we lease. So we're going to get out from under that so we don't pay that $400 and we're going to buy it outright what's left, and we'll have no more lease payment, and then we will be, absolutely, other than your power and your water and things of that nature, insurance, uh, without any cost at all to the church. We believe God is positioning us that way because there is a harvest to reap here and abroad, and we're going to do our best to do that. Amen? Sister Darla's going to come. It'd be a great time if you want to give. If you haven't dropped anything in the basket back there, you can do that. Uh, so this will be a great time. We're going to worship the Lord with her as she sings this morning. I want to read a quote to y'all. Um, many of you have probably seen it on social media before. Um, but it says, if we don't teach our children to follow Christ, the world will teach them not to. And... Every time I see, I see it from time to time, and it just really resonates with me because I don't think we can teach them too much about following uh, Christ. But there is so many things going against them, and one thing is just the voices that they hear. And so this song, to me, when I hear it, I think about it being a voice that I want to teach my children to listen to. And the voice, you know, the voice of truth is an older song, and y'all may have seen Micah up here with me earlier she heard me practicing this song earlier the, this morning, and she said, I want to sing with you. And I said, well, you can, you can. And then she said, I don't think I know that song. I said, well, I haven't sang this song probably before you were born. It's been a long time since I've sang it. Um, and I said, but I, I have to sing another song that you do know, so you could sing that one with me. And so if y'all don't know her, she is very bashful, and she is very, very shy. So the fact that she wanted to, to get up here and sing was a big deal. Um, which is why we didn't call her out <laughs> when she was in here. But I just think those little opportunities, you know, y'all probably never heard her, um, you know, singing it out. But at least, you know, she wanted to be up here. And I'm, I'm just proud of her for that. And so I just, I just want us to, you know, always remember with, with the children. And I, I heard something recently um, on a sermon I was listening to. And it, it just talked about how, if, you know, if, if we as the church aren't ministering to our children, maybe not even our children, but just children in general, all the voices that they're hearing out in the world. And so I just, I encourage you, um, you know, to be involved in our children here at the church, whether it's through, you know, Bible school or children's church or Wednesday night or whatever, or just going beside them and, and just letting them know that, that you acknowledge that they go to our church. And that's from every, every age, from babies to teenagers, um, just letting them know that they have a confidence in you as, you know, a church member. 
because there's certainly a lot of voices going after them out there in this world. Go ahead. climb out of this boat I'm in and onto the crashing waves step out of my comfort zone to the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand but the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed to keep on telling me time and time again oh you'll never win you'll never win but the voice of truth tells me a different story the voice of truth says do not be afraid and the voice of Just a sling and a stone Surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors Shaking in their armor Wishing they'd have had the strength to stand But the giant's calling out my name And he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times i tried before and failed The giant keeps on telling me Time and time again, oh, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, This is for my glory. Out of all the voices, to listen and believe the voice but the stone was just the right size to put the giant on the ground and the waves they don't seem so high on top of them looking down and I'll soar on the wings of eagles and when I stop and listen to the sound of Jesus singing over me and the voice of truth Tell me a different story. The voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, This is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe. I will choose to listen and believe.
Thank you, Darla. That took me back a ways. I remember that song when that was popular. Amen. Turn with me this morning to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. While you're turning there, uh, we want to welcome um, a new member this morning, Sister Linda Bradway. Um, she's sitting back there on the back row. Would you mind standing just so people can see you? Everybody turn around and look at Miss Linda back there. Amen. She's been coming for several months now. Can I just tell you that you are where you are for a reason? Your job, your neighborhood, you are where you are. She was a customer for Amanda Holmes. And Amanda, I think, invited her to church or told her about the church. And she started coming, and here she is, part of Sweetwater today. You are where you are for a reason and a purpose. You are to be salt and light in a world. You are to be light in darkness. You are to be a faithful witness for Christ. And if you're proud of your church, you ought to be a witness for that as well. So we welcome her today, and we're blessed and honored to have her as part of our family today. See if you can catch her when church is over and let her know how much we love and appreciate her and how thankful we are to have her. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'll begin at verse 15. And in this confidence, I was minded to come unto you before, that you might have a second benefit, and to pass by you into Macedonia and to come again out of Macedonia unto you, and of you to be brought on my way toward Judea. When I was therefore, when I was therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or with the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh, that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you, by us, even by me at Silvanus and Timothy, or Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. This is the verse I want to get to. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Last week, the Spirit of the Lord was heavily involved in the service, and we just had an altar call after the worship, after the offering, after the special song, and the Lord did His work, and we did not get to continue with our series that we've been on for a while. Our series title has been, has been titled, When the Impossible Becomes Possible. We talked the first week about what that literally means. And for some people, we thought maybe it was just an inference to talking about things like sickness and miraculous things that only could be done by the hands of God. And that is true. That there are miraculous things that only happen by the hand of God. And He can heal. And He can do great and mighty things. But can I tell you, there is much more God does in making impossible things possible. So that first day we laid the foundation to let you know that anything is possible with God. Anything He's planned, anything He's purposed, anything He's spoken, anything He has directed even toward the church is possible. Well, sometimes all people want is they want the miraculous. And when you need a miracle, you need a miracle. But I'm here to tell you, God has placed the church in her spot to do her thing for God's kingdom in this world. And if all we think we are is to be a place where we come and we just feel good for a while and go out the door and there's nothing else for us to do, we've misunderstood our purpose. But you, why are you talking like this? Because August the 1st was four years. My wife and I have been pastors of this church. 
And I've tried for four years to help us to understand we are here for a reason. There is a purpose for this called out body of believers in the world called Christians. And there's a reason why this specific called out body called Sweetwater Church of God exists at 1444 Edgefield Road in North Augusta. There is a reason. And I believe part of the reason is because God wants to use her to make the impossible things possible. Do you know that there are people out there who are lost and away from God? They're bound by addiction. They're bound by all kinds of things. And there are people who have written them off and said they will never be saved. You know what that is? That sounds like an impossible situation, but not with God. And the church has has been called to be the embodiment of Christ to the world. The church has been called to be salt and light, to be, to be help to a world that is dying and hurting, a world that is decaying. And listen, if we're honest, it's even decaying in a lot of churches because we don't believe what we used to believe and we don't teach what we used to teach. There are churches who are ordaining people who aren't, in my opinion, even born again. Come on. We are called to make a difference. And I do understand that spiritual gifts are given because they are, are important in that they empower us to do the work, but they're also visible things that lost people see that connect them to a God that is alive and does have power. There are many people who question that God is alive or that God has power. And the miraculous helps people understand there is a living God who still has power. And so what I've tried to do is lay a foundation for you that God can do the impossible things and make them possible. And then we started building on top of that particular thing. We've talked about being together. What it looks like to be unified. And what we are together about. We're together about Christ. We're, we're together about His purpose for us. But I want to tell you there's another thing that I want to talk about today, and that is this corner post of anointing. I said anointing. Now, if I were to go around the room and ask you to describe what anointing is, I would probably get a whole bunch of answers. I would get people who'd say, well, it's when somebody starts hollering. Anointing is when people start sweating. Anointing is when, I mean, you know, we, we, because it's things we associate with what we deem as being anointed. The word anointing means to rub, to smear, to pour. It was done in Old Testament times especially when kings and priests were chosen. It was done even to articles like cups and lavers and other things because it was a sign that that thing is holy and it's not to be used for just any old thing. It is set aside for the purpose of being used in worship and in sacrifice to God. Did you know that if you've given your life to Christ, you literally have been anointed? You have been anointed for a purpose. You are not anointed to sit. You are anointed to serve. The problem is we got a lot of sitters, not a lot of servers. I told Sister Linda today that some people think that because they don't sing or because they don't teach, they're not usable. God has gifted every person. And whatever you have the ability to, to do, you need to use it for Jesus. If you are a seamstress, you need to use it for Jesus. Because at Christmas time and other times, they need costumes made. I want to tell you, use your gifting for the glory of God. You are not called to sit. You are called to serve. Well, I don't know what I'm able to do. Can you pray? Pray. Can you, can you use the phone? Call. Use what you have in service for the kingdom. You see this thing of anointing all throughout Scripture. We're anointed because of the anointed one whose name was Jesus. 
2 Corinthians 1.21 says, Now he which establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us. Christ, the one who is the anointed one, has anointed us. The one who is above has anointed us. I've come to tell you today, you are chosen. And you have a specific purpose for being in existence. I know sometimes we come to church and this kind of preaching is not what we want to hear. But can I tell you, my mama used to make me eat stuff I didn't want to eat. But she said, this is what you need. She didn't even give me medicine that was nasty. Y'all ever took Paragard, Parag, whatever that stuff's called? I would throw up every time I took it. It was so nasty and it would do some drawing something in my throat and I couldn't hold it down. My mama would give it to me again. She figured one of, these, one of these times you're going to keep it. But my mama did it because she loved me. Because she knew that I had been placed on this earth for a reason. In her eyes, I was a gift from God. In her eyes, there was something that God wanted to do. Her and my father took it as a responsibility to raise my brother and I in church for the kingdom's sake. Because we are here for a purpose. You individually and us collectively as a Sweetwater Church, we have been anointed from the one on high and he has established us here for a reason. You are anointed. As a Pentecostal church, we believe in being anointed also by the Holy Ghost. How many knows what I'm talking about? 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you have not need of any man to teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And you live in translation, it says it like this, but you have received the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you, and you don't need anyone to teach you what is true, for the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know, and what he teaches is true, it is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. You have been anointed by the one on high, and you, if you have the baptism of the Spirit, you are anointed with the Holy Ghost. There's a reason why the church of God in Sweetwater is in existence. We are anointed. I really wanted to bring a mirror, stand it up right here, and just say, take a look at yourself. But then I thought you'd be looking at yourself all service. I remember the church I was at before I came here, when we first got cameras and got our cameras connected to the projector so that we could literally project the image of the congregation. So what, what people are seeing online now and what you see when you go back and watch was also projected on the screen. And it was the funniest thing. The first few services, men who were sitting in the, in the, you know, in the angle of the, church, of the camera would see the back of their bald head and they would inevitably reach up because they hadn't seen it. They didn't know, is that what that looks like? Take a look at yourself. See, see, we're listening. As Darla sang about, we're listening to all kinds of other voices, but we are not hearing what the voice of the Lord says about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are important to the king. You are anointed. Quit listening to what everybody else says and see yourself. As God sees you. You are anointed and I believe the church is anointed. Some people will dare say that the church is not anointed like it used to be. Because we base anointing on certain activity. There's certain kind of ministry, that's anointed. If there's certain kind of stuff happening, that's anointed. If that's not happening, we're not anointed. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that sometimes the greatest anointed services I have been in have been the quietest service. I'm not advocating for quiet. Because I can't preach quiet. I'm a hollerer. I figure if I can holler at a ball game, I can holler in church for Jesus. 
I'm not advocating for that, but I'm telling you, anointing has nothing to do with loud or soft. It has to do with who it is that's touching you, who it is that has done the work, who it is that is calling you, who it is that has a purpose and destiny for your life. I looked in Scripture to try to understand the process of anointing. When they did this anointing, it signified a divine appointment. It was what they did to show a divine purpose for a king, a priest, a high priest, a prophet, or even the Lord Himself. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He hath anointed me to preach. How many of you ever look and think of Jesus as a screaming preacher? Let me see your hand. Most of us think of Jesus, the teacher. And yet Jesus said, He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Send me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit has anointed me. It was for a divine purpose. It was for a specific thing. Acts chapter 10 36 to 38, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That the word, I say, you know, which was published through all Judea, began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing the good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I want to tell you, you need to recognize that you're anointed and you need that Holy Ghost anointed because it means that God is with you. That's why we can sing and be happy this morning. You are not alone. I am not alone. You want to know why? Because God is with me. Jesus is with me. The Holy Ghost is with me. Let the world run off and leave me. But I'll never be alone. The anointing signifies a special honor. It showed that people were more than just flesh and blood, but that they had a unique and special touch on their life. 1 Samuel 24, 6 and 10, And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord hath delivered thee into, and today into my hands in the cave, and some bade me to kill thee. But mine eyes spared not, and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for He is the Lord's anointed. David had an opportunity to get rid of the one that was creating havoc for him, but he recognized God had His hand on him through His anointing, and he would not put His hand on Saul. Anointing also signifies a special privilege. Doesn't mean you get the big head. I'm anointed. It means that you recognize that anointing came from God and that He gave it to you for you to use because you have been given a specific assignment. God will never ask you to do something and not prepare you and anoint you. If He has an appointment for you and an assignment for you, He will prepare you for it and He will anoint you so that you can accomplish exactly what He's asking you to do. I wish I had somebody help me this morning. He has the power to keep kings and kingdoms from coming against you. He has the power to open doors no man can open. He has power to close doors no one can close. He can shut the mouths of people who are speaking against you. My God has the power. Why would we not want to obey Him and recognize we've been given an assignment and an appointment and He will make sure we can accomplish what He wants. Psalm 105, 15, Touch not mine anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Anointing also signifies God's blessing. Woo! How many like to be blessed? The anointing signifies the blessing of God. God rests His favor, His divine appointment on you. He shows honor and He shows that you are a blessed people. When I tell you that Sweetwater is an anointed church, what I'm telling you is Sweetwater is a blessed church. 
I'm going to say it one more time for this section. Sweetwater is a blessed church. You're not blessed because of your leadership. You're not blessed because of who your pastor is. You're blessed because God has handpicked you and ordained you way back some years ago, 29 plus years ago, when he picked that man uh, to, to start this church and all of the years that have succeeded up to now, you are what you are because God ordained you. God appointed you. God anointed you. God had a purpose for you. That means you're blessed. I think it's my wife sings a song, I'm blessed. Maybe it's not. Maybe I get confused. I'm old and senile. I'm sorry. I'm blessed. I am blessed. When I woke up in the morning, I was blessed. I want to tell you something today. God has a specific appointment and a purpose. We are blessed. Psalm 23, 5, you prepare a feast before me in the presence of mine enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. You are blessed. What I'm trying to get you to understand is, is that Sweetwater Church of God has been given a divine appointment by God. If you think that our only appointment is to come in on Sunday morning and have some church and go back to your daily life the way it was, you've missed it. If you look at Sunday morning, it's where we come to get recharged and re-energized and to get our marching orders and then to walk out there and live out what we heard, you get it. Now, I understand we need pickups. I understand we need spiritual highs. I understand that there are things that transpire that we need in our life. But listen to me. There is a world out there that Jesus is depending on us. Sometimes people will say, well, I don't know why we're doing that. I don't know why we're using the money for that. I don't know much of anything you can do don't cost anything. It's just going to be a matter of time before you can't even get water at the restaurant for free. Because they're going to tell you, well, we got to wash the dish. And they'll charge you. How many of you thought you'd be paying over $3 for a glass of tea? Come on. You can't do much of anything for nothing. So sometimes what you have to understand is ministry costs. I, I know you're looking for me to preach on the Holy Ghost and let's have a running, but I'm trying to say to you, we're here for a reason. And He's given us the Holy Ghost to use for our assignment and for our appointment. This coming week, we have been graced with an opportunity to speak to and to feed the football team for Fox Creek High School. Wednesday afternoon, I'm going to be speaking to the football team. Now, I've not done that in this capacity here, so I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what I'm expected to do. But how many knows that even if in what I do, we don't see anybody come to Christ, we're beginning to develop partnership with the school system. Our ladies' ministries, Sister Becky Simons, and others have already had that relationship with teachers and workers. But when you're given an opportunity to be able to engage the student, we're not here by chance. Their school sign is not in our property by chance. We've been given an appointment, an assignment. And it ain't just Fox Creek. There are other places that need some help. Some, some anointed people who come in who recognize their appointment and who recognize that they've been called and given. I could tell you that God has honored us by choosing this location for us to be. I could tell you that we're privileged. I said we're privileged. <laughs> Y'all not getting it. 
Do you understand that if the God of this universe looks down and picks you and ordains you and anoints you with purpose and an assignment and an appointment, do you know how blessed you are and how privileged you are? That the God of the world has reached down and little o us and picked us and said, listen, there's something that only you can do. Nobody else can do it like you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You've been created and fashioned for such a time as this. Brothers and sisters, I'm looking at blessed people. I'm looking at privileged people. Then I look at some of the ordinary uses for anointed. I want you to hang on to those because those are important. But when I look at the way they used anointing, they used it for adornment. Ruth 3 and 3, Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee. Put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. I told you that one of the word anoint means to rub and smear. That not only did they rub oil and smear, but sometimes it was ointment. And sometimes the ointments had special smells. We know this is a story of Ruth and Naomi. They had fled Bethlehem because there, there was famine, so they had gone over to Moab. And all of their husbands had died. Ruth trying to, I mean, uh, Naomi's trying to release her daughters-in-law, you stay here, I'm going back to the house of bread. And Ruth said, no, where you go, I'm going. Where you lodge, I'm lodging. I heard a man preaching this morning and said the reason why Orpah made a different decision than Ruth did was because Orpah loved uh, Naomi's son, but she didn't love Naomi. But that Ruth loved Naomi. And she went back to where she was. Can I tell you, it was strategic. Can I tell you, it was an appointment. Can I tell you, it was for a purpose. Because the only hope they had was if there was a kinsman redeemer. Because widows didn't have insurance. There was nothing left for them but for them to die. Oh, but if there is a kinsman, if there is a redeemer, Sure enough, there was a kinsman redeemer by the name of Boaz. Naomi says, listen, Ruth, what you got to do is anoint yourself. Smell good, honey. Look good, baby. Don't get too close to him until after he's got his belly full. She had a kinsman redeemer. I want to tell you what this house is full of. This house is full of people who have understood their need for the kinsman redeemer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who met him? His name is Jesus. And by his hand, they have been anointed with purpose. You're blessed. You're privileged. When I tell you, you are. I'm telling you why. The kinsman redeemer has purchased you. Second Corinthians 2.15 says, We are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that are perished, you are a sweet smell to Christ. You're privileged. You're blessed. You're anointed. I won't tell you why I'm passionate about this. Because in this world out there, there are all kinds of voices who tell you, you are nothing. Can't tell you of the times I work with people who are suffering in their adult life because they have been pushed down as a child. They've been pushed down in their marriage. They've been told they're nothing, no count, no good. I'm telling you the devil is a lie. I'm trying to get you to hear if you're saved. You've been purchased by the Kingsman Redeemer. He has anointed you for purpose and assignment. Look at yourself. Well, I wanted that mirror. Look at yourself. 
Quit looking at what you're looking for because somebody said. Do yourself the way he says. They were anointed. They were not just anointed because it was an adornment. They were anointed because it invigorated. The word literally in the dictionary means it means to be filled with life and energy. 2 Samuel 12, 20. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself. Changed his apparel. This is when his son had been sick. And he'd been fasting and praying for his son to be healed. But his son died. Then the Bible said he got up and he washed and he anointed himself. That word anoint means he rubbed some stuff on him. I'm going to date myself. Some of y'all may remember the commercial. Was it high karate? Cologne? Where they put some in their hand and they slap her. The picture I got when David, who had not eaten, and he was weak from crying, and he was weak from not eating, got up from that place, he took a shower, and he rubbed some stuff on himself to invigorate himself. We need some folk to invigorate themselves. You've allowed all the stuff you're going through to tear you down. You've allowed all the words to tear you down. You've allowed the circumstances of your life to tear you down. You've, you've allowed the disappointments of the life to tear you down. I understand things have not gone the way you wanted. I know things didn't turn out the way you planned or where you dreamed. But listen to me. It's time to recognize who you are. The kinsman redeemer has saved you. Now get up from where you are and invigorate yourself. With his anointed. His anointing. They also used it for battle. Isaiah, Isaiah 21 5. This passage is talking about the destruction of Babylon. He said, Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. Times when they were getting ready to go in battle, they would literally rub that anointing stuff on their shield. They knew that ultimately he was their shield, and their high tower, and their buckler. They didn't want to go out there with anything without being covered and anointed. We're talking about it on Wednesday night, how that we're in a battle for our life. And we're talking about warfare. How the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God. They're pulling down the strongholds. We've talked about what warfare and what it is. We've talked about how uh, talked about the carnal versus the spirit. How the carnal in the flesh tries to do this, but how the spirit should do something else. But we talked about the mighty God Wednesday night. That makes all the difference. You might have war. You might have struggle. You might be in the fight for your life. But don't forget who your mighty God is. Don't forget about God who can do everything. Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I used to accuse my daddy of not anointing his gun when he went deer hunting because he couldn't hit it. He'd practice. He'd go to the target range. He got him a bow. My daddy, my daddy would climb up on the banister of the back deck. And he had one of them big round uh, styrofoam things, and he would put a target on it. And he'd make me and my brother stand at the top of the driveway and run it down the hill and let it run across the backyard. He'd stand up there on the, on the top of that deck. He could hit the target, but he couldn't hit a deer. It's more to it than just saying you anointed it. It's saying you anoint it because you believe in the one who provides the anointing. I'm doing the outside anointing because, Lord, I believe you are covering the inside. I'm doing this because I want you to know I'm not depending on the shield. I'm not depending on the bow and the arrow. I'm depending on you so that when I shoot my bow, you make my arrow go straight. When I sling the rock, you make it hit the old giant in the head. I'm depending on you. 
you depending on him? You can depend on Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'm going to make a mess. Yeah, I've been yeah. around. That's what you call unscripted. The song says, as he was yesterday, today, forever he's the same. You can depend. You can depend on him. You can depend on Jesus. Your anointing that you do to invigorate yourself is a sign to God that you are trusting in Him. I do not anoint myself because I believe I can do it. I anoint myself because I believe He can do it. They anointed for burial. Matthew 26, beginning of verse 6, when now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto Him a woman having a... Alabaster box, a very precious ointment. He poured it on his head as he said it meat. When his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For the ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For you have the poor with you always, but you don't always have me. For in that she had poured the ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. The New American Bible says, In pouring this perfume oil upon my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. We use the word embalming process, but they didn't do what we do in embalming today. They literally threw in these spices to cover up the odor of a decaying body. See, Jesus already knew that he was going to be placed in a tomb, but he wasn't going to stay there long enough to decompose fully. So when he died, there was one or two that got him down. They hurriedly threw a few things in when they wrapped around him and they put him in the tomb. They fully intended to come back and finish preparing his body. That's what the women were going to do that day because they had not been part of that and they wanted to be part of preparing his body. They were trying to figure out how we're going to roll the stone away and how we're going to finish the job. But it was already done. The stone was rolled and Jesus was risen. He knew his body needed to be anointed beforehand. Because he was going to do what he was going to do for a purpose, for a reason, for an assignment. He was going to show the world an open tomb where the dead can literally raise again. If you don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, you don't have no hope. But because he rose, when he tells me that I'm going to come back again and I'll resurrect the dead, the dead in Christ will rise first. The reason why I can believe it is because I believe Jesus got up. Rose from the dead. I'm trying to hurry. There's also a sanctifying that happens in anointing. Exodus 30, 25 to 29, And thou shalt make it the oil a holy ointment. And a, an anointment, uh, you shall make it an oil of holy ointment. An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. Thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation with it and the ark of the testimony and the table and all the vessels and the candlesticks and its vessels and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offerings with all his vessels and the laver and his foot. You shall sanctify them. How? He already said, you anoint it all so that it is most holy. It is only to be used for that purpose. Anointing was something that was to make it holy and to set it apart. I talked to Sister Linda today about sanctification. And I told her there's two parts to sanctification. There's the part that cleanses us. And there's the part that separates us. It's why when they made those things they were going to use, it looked like every other vessel. But what they did is they took the oil and they anointed this vessel saying, this is holy. This cup over here is what you drink of out at your house. But this one is not designed for that. 
this one is holy and this one is set apart so we don't use it for anything else. You want to know why I think the Lord anoints us? It's because He wants to make sure we understand we're holy. Brothers and sisters, I don't care what other churches may teach you. You can't live just any way you want to. Not if you claim to be a Christian. Oh, Brother Terry, that's old fogey. No, that's word. You can't. It's not only confusing to the world. It's confusing to folk on the inside. But then he wants to anoint you, not only so you'll be holy, but he wants you to understand because you are holy and you can't do what you used to do, now you've been set aside for a specific reason. This cup don't have just anything in it anymore. Y'all getting quiet because you know where I'm going. You don't just put just anything in this cup because this cup's holy, sanctified, and anointed. This cup is for a special usage. You won't know I think God has anointed Sweetwater Church of God because we have had a history that we don't tolerate. We can't be like everybody else. I know a lot of people want to be. We don't want the preacher to talk about sin. We don't want to call sin by name. And if you know me, you know I very rarely do that because I believe the Holy Ghost is able to bring conviction to your life and you, he can deal with that. But listen, you cannot claim to be the anointed of God and not be the separated of God at the same time. Because when you're anointed, you've already been cleansed and part of that sanctifying says that now you're required to be holy. There are times when churches and pastors and other people make decisions and we don't agree with it and we don't like it and that's too hard. But listen, what we're doing is we're warring for your soul. We don't want you to start out early believing that any old thing will go and when you live your life and then you become defeated and you don't feel like you have the blessing of God and you don't feel like you have the touch of God and you feel like you're praying but you don't hear the voice of God and the reason is nobody told you that cleansing also meant separating and you're trying to dance with the world and you can't dance with the world and have the glory of God. Why are you talking like this? Because we're getting ready to have revival. And I just want to get and tell you, the evangelist can't bring revival. We should not expect the evangelist to bring revival. We ought to already be in a mode of revival when he gets here. And it's my job as pastor to help us to understand that revival is the coming back to life. It is the quickening. It is the awakening. How many of you have been watching TV or you've been watching a video and you, and you kind of zone out and you come back to yourself and you have no idea what's happened? And you have to back it up or watch it over. Let me see your hand. Do you know you can zone out spiritually? You can come to church. You can sit on the pew. You can sit on the chair. You can raise your hand. You can stand up. But you can be zoned out and not even know what's happening. It's time that we awaken. It's time that we come back to life. It's time we snap ourselves to attention and recognize we have been anointed. We have been sanctified. We have been cleansed of sin. We have been set apart for a purpose. Leviticus 20, verse 7, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, be ye holy. For I am the Lord your God. 1 Peter 1, 15, 16, But as he which hath called you is holy, so you be holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, because you're a holy, I am holy. Being sanctified means we've been consecrated for the Lord to use. When I tell you that the corner post of the impossible would become impossible is when the church realizes we are called to be anointed. 
And anointed people are set aside people or consecrated people or cleansed people who recognize they're blessed and privileged. Don't make us better than anybody else. And listen, if you think you're the only anointed church, you done got too egotistical. Because the truth is, every other church who believes in God and Christ and the Holy Ghost ought to also be anointed. Which means they're blessed and they're privileged and they're defined in purpose for a special thing. God's not calling us to be like every other church. I'm not saying we can't learn from other churches. We can. I reached out the other day to Mark Condon. Mark Condon is apostolic. Mark Condon has a church in Ohio. I knew Mark Condon from the music he wrote and the praise and worship songs I used to lead years ago. But on his page, he showed some pages of something he's developed to try to help people in the early stages when they come into church. And I just reached out to him. I said, listen, I just want to know if you could share with me what that is. Where did you find it or how did you get it? And he said, well, we're developing. We're going to make it available soon. And I guess he got under conviction and it wasn't long. He sent me a Dropbox link to all the information that he's using at his church. You know what he recognizes? He recognizes that he has been given a kingdom assignment. And the kingdom assignment is bigger than his place in Ohio. And brothers and sisters, we've been given a kingdom assignment right here at Sweetwater in this part of the CSRA. But the kingdom assignment is bigger than here. And I'm telling you, if Sweetwater has something some other church can use and they're going to use it to reach souls, they're welcome to use it. We got risers that are up in, upstairs in a room that we never use. But if there's somebody that needs to use some risers, guess what I'm going to tell them? They can use it because I want souls to come to Christ. I want lives to be changed. I want drug addicts to be free. I want those who are bound by whatever to be free. James 4 and 8, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. The New Century Version says, You sinners, clean out the sin out of your lives. You are trying to follow God and the world at the same time. Make your thinking pure. Brother Terry, are you calling us sinners? No, I'm not. I don't know your life. I don't know how you walk. I don't know anything about you. I shouldn't say I don't know anything about you. I don't know about your private. I want to tell you what I believe God wants for Sweetwater. He wants a church that is adorned with the anointing. A church that is visible and smells good. What do you smell when you walk? When Tracy and those and our praise team and, and singers, and I mean the glory of God's moving, and people are getting out of their seat and they're walking to the front, you, sometimes you'll see me, ah. Oh, Do you think it has a physical smell? I don't know, but I can tell you sometimes I've been in an empty sanctuary and I have felt, the, I have smelt the presence of God. Have you ever smelt a sweet smell? I've smelt flowers and there ain't, they ain't nothing that's in there that's not artificial. There have been times when I've been in His presence, I have felt the warmth of His glory. I have felt the cold, like, like the wind that was blowing out of His nostrils. There have been times when I felt like my neck was going to be driven down in, in my shoulders. What I'm telling you is, listen, He needs a church that is visible. It has the aroma of an anointed church. He needs a church that is invigorated with energy. In life, I don't know how you feel, but Wednesday night, it's, it's kind of got pandemonium to it before church starts and after it's over. If you're up there on the hill, you don't always know about it, but down here, when the kids are coming in, the young people are coming in, and the adults are coming in, they all kind of gather in the lobby, and they're hollering and shooting and throwing and punching and slapping and you know, I can remember a time when I first came in here, we didn't even have anything on Wednesday, at least every other week. We had stuff up there. We had nothing in here. 
when I hear children, when I hear young people, when I hear adults laughing and, and talking to each other and fellowshipping together, that is a visible, it is an audible sign. The people who are looking for fellowship, who are looking for camaraderie, who are looking to feel like they are not alone. Hey! We need a church that's ready for battle. Our denomination at the assembly passed and I've got to get with our staff to make sure they fully understand. But they passed that no licensed credentialed minister nor anybody on their staff call anybody any other name or pronoun other than what they were designated when they were born. Now it doesn't mean that we don't love people who are struggling. Jesus had compassion on groups of people that the religious people would have nothing to do with. He was constantly found among women who were looked at as property and nothing more. But Jesus wanted the next generation to know that I came into this world to die for everybody. I just didn't come to die for men. I came to die for women. He was found in the houses of publicans and tax collectors, which nobody would have any. He said, I've come to save everybody. People that you don't want nothing to do with, Jesus said, I've come to save them. He wants to save everybody. I can love the sinner, but I don't have to love the sin. I can love them enough to walk with them, to talk with them, and to do my best to let the smell of the anointing be so noticeable that they know they need something different. But you can't make statements like that and not expect the devil to fight. So the church needs to be anointed for battle. We need to be dead, not in the church, but dead to the world. Dead to the way they're wanting. Dead to their conversation. Dead to where they're trying to lead us. We have to die to that and come alive in Jesus. We need a church that's holy and sanctified. Let's trace it, come on. One more reason they used the anointing was for medical reasons. They would pour oil in wounds. It was used for healing. And often there are people that come in off the street into our church and they are suffering because they are hurt, and wounded. Sometimes they're wounded because of words. Sometimes they're wounded because of their past. Sometimes they're wounded because of things they did to them, their own self. They're looking for a place that believes that if they'll come in, the anointing of the Lord has the power to soothe their wound and to bring healing. What I'm trying to do this morning is tell you, you are anointed. I sometimes think we come in and we don't even know who we are. See, you sit there and you look this direction. But I get to stand here and I look at this direction. My heart becomes overwhelmed when I think about the people that are here and the anointing on their life. Some of you, I know your story. I know where you've walked. I know what you've been through. I know what you've come out of. And I know that if God can bring you out of that, He can do it. And you know it too. That's the reason why when people come down, you join them in prayer. Because you know the power of a mighty God. And yet some of you know that power, but you don't come forward. You don't share your testimony. You don't tell people about your experience. And they get up from here and they walk away still bound. But I'm trying to tell you, it's time for us to invigorate ourselves. It's time for us to take some of that anointing oil, slap it on the face, 
wake ourselves up and recognize we've been chosen. You've been anointed. We have a purpose. We have an assignment. We have a reason for being here. You have a personal reason. And I'm, I'm just asking the church, oh, how I wish I brought that mirror. I'd have you single file come die and look at yourself. If I'd have been smart, I'd have done it, and I'd had a sash taped on that thing that says, knowing it. I'd have another one that, that showed up and said, hey, I'm, I'm special. I'm gifted. I've, I'm set apart. Because I think we forget who we are. I want you to stand on your feet. I know I've gone way too long. I'm sorry. But I want you to hear me. If you walk out of here today and all you do is say, I heard what he said, but I'm not doing anything about that. I, I'm sorry for you because you don't realize how special you are. You don't realize how blessed you are. You don't realize the privilege that you have. And if you would recognize that, you could allow God to use that privilege and that blessing and that help in your life to help us reach this world. I just need to know if there are people in this room today who will recognize that I'm anointed. And you'll just step forward and say to God, I know who I am. Maybe you're here today and you'll say to God, I know I'm saved and I know what He's saying is that I've already been chosen by Him. But what I've allowed happen is my circumstances to kind of pull me down the mully grubs. But what I need to do today is I need to invigorate myself. I need to slap myself. I need the Lord to spiritually slap me and wake me up and remind me who I am in Him. I need some people who will say to God, I know I'm anointed, but what I need you to do is to freshly anoint this vessel so that when I go out to that world, that world sees an anointed vessel. That it sees me, it smells the aroma of His presence in me. I'm asking for people who believe that sweet water is here for a reason and a purpose. And you want to help us to fulfill our purpose by recognizing God has chosen you and God has chosen us for this moment. I'm asking you to step forward. believe in the power of God, would you mind stepping around? Or if you're at the altar and you feel led, would you mind just putting your hand on a person's shoulder and praying over them in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Come on, Lord. Here we are. Here we are. Hallelujah. Here we are. The anointed of God.
adorned with his fragrance. Ask him for it right now. Take my heart and forget. Hallelujah. Take my mind. Can his anointing be seen on your face, on your countenance, in your walking talk? that have stepped forward today. They're either here because they accept the fact that they're anointed and they're saying to you, use me. Or they're here today because, Lord, they need to invigorate themselves. They know that they're saved. They know that you've chosen and purposed. Sometimes, Lord, the cares of life and the circumstances of life have a way of overwhelming us. And they've come today, Lord, because they want to want to invigorate themselves. Maybe they're here today, Lord, because they, they just want to verify that their life is anointed in a way that's visible, a way that transcends beyond their words so that they're visible to those that they are in front of. Lord, I pray that you would not only use the individuals of our church, but that, Lord, you would also use the collective body of Sweetwater Church of God and that we will fulfill our purpose, our calling, our destiny. Lord, if we, if we walk in what you've destined for us, we will absolutely see the impossible become possible. It is not just in terms of healing bodies. It is not just in terms of seeing people delivered from all kinds of other things. That absolutely will happen. But Lord, when we begin to function in the way that we're called to function, we're going to see sinners come to faith in Jesus. We're going to see, we're going to see this church explode because people are doing what they've been anointed and appointed to do. I know we got to take care of those that are our members. But Lord, we've been given the great commission to fulfill. To go, Lord, into every place that we can go. Into all the world. Make disciples. And I pray, God, you'll help us to do it to the best of our ability. Touch those that need help in their bodies today. Touch those that need help in their minds today. Touch those that need help in their spirits today. Encourage them and lift them up today. And Lord, I pray whenever they walk by a mirror, they'll look at themselves and not see themselves the way everybody else sees them or even see themselves the way they see themselves. But let them see themselves the way you have purpose and designed for them to be. They are the anointing of God. They are the separated. They are the separated. They are the called out. They are the appointed ones. They are blessed. Oh, hallelujah. They are privileged. Do it in them. Do it for them. And we'll be careful to bless and honor you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, we're having night of worship. 6 o'clock, right here singing, no preaching, no teaching. Unless the Holy Ghost gets involved, something else happens. Our plan is just to worship Him and bless Him. Invite your friends and family to come be part. Top of my head to my feet.